Uh, so tomorrow, Apple's chief lawyer, Bruce Sewell, testifies before Congress regarding the FBI's request for a government OS for the iPhone. Uh, motherboard uncovered his remarks, the gist of which is that mobile encryption ought to be decided by representatives of the people, not by a warrant request based on the All Writs Act. And then just this afternoon, a federal judge in New York ruled that the U.S. could not use the All Writs Act to gain access to this phone in this case. So, Nate, uh, what does this mean? So the, the case in New York is a little bit different than the one in San Bernardino. In New York, the government was asking Apple to unlock an iOS 7 device. This is something that Apple can do relatively easily. And frankly, it's something that pretty much any of us can do uh, with only a little bit of effort. iOS 7 doesn't have the kind of security features involved in the San Bernardino iPhone. Uh, and you can go to a company called Cellbrite um, which sells a forensics tool to unlock uh, that phone. So what Apple was saying in the, uh, in the New York case that was decided today was that, hey, you guys have the capability to do it yourselves. Um, so take this All Writs Act order and shove it. It's not, um, not something that you can force us to do if you have the capability to do it yourselves. Uh, and the judge agreed today, but he agreed in sort of a grand fashion. Uh, the judge said, Apple's right, but not only that, even if you couldn't do it yourselves, um, the All Writs Act doesn't permit you to order an American company to provide this kind of assistance to law enforcement. So is the, so the judge was saying Apple's right, but was the judge saying that people should ha be able to have phones that the FBI can never crack into? Is that what the judge was saying? No, actually, so the judge doesn't address that question. Uh, the, judge, the judge's opinion is limited to whether current statutory law, the All Writs Act, um, passed in 1789 and obviously amended several times since then, permits the government to request this kind of order. Um, so the, the New York case wasn't necessarily about uh, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing for Apple to, uh, to provide this kind of encryption. The New York case is limited to whether uh, the 1789 law, the All Writs Act, permits this kind of order. So um, directly from Judge Ornstein's ruling, um, here, here's kind of the, the nugget, I suppose, at least as far as what I was reading into it. Nothing in the government's arguments suggests any principled limit on how far the court may go in requiring a person or company to violate the most deeply rooted values to provide assistance to the government the court deems necessary. So they're basically saying, like, there's no limits here. Like, what, what is to stop the government for, for going to more to more to more? How, what is the kind of precedent uh, potential, I suppose, of this in the current case that we've been talking about for almost, well, it feels like eternity, but uh, a week and a half now? Like, how much of this kind of has the potential of rolling over and kind of bolstering Apple's case, let's say? Um, I think it has a big potential to bolster Apple's case in San Bernardino. Um, and, and the legal issues are, are actually relatively similar in the two cases, even though the tech is different. Um, if the FBI wins in either New York or in San Bernardino, there's the potential for the government to use that precedent to force companies to backdoor just about anything. Uh, and in this Internet of Things world that we live in, that could literally mean anything, all the way down to your actual door. Uh, if you have an electronic lock. So the uh, the, the judge in, in New York agreed with Apple. Apple's filing in California was crystal clear on this point, that the rule that the government is asking for has no limitation. It's not limited to this one phone. It's not limited to these two phones. It could be applied to anything. And an uh, American technology company could be ordered, um, if, if the government's interpretation is right, um, to essentially redesign pretty much any system to give law enforcement entrance. Uh, and that's not the way that uh, American justice works, should work, or really has ever worked. So was this a surprise to Apple? I mean, were they expecting this ruling um, or, or? With the New York case? Yeah. Well, so the New York case has another interesting sort of procedural facet, uh, which is the defendant in that case has already pled guilty to the crime that he's accused of. Um, so the phone kind of doesn't matter in that case. Uh, the judge asked both parties, Apple and the FBI, uh, if the case had been mooted by his pleading guilty. Um, and both parties said no. 
But I think everybody was expecting Judge Orenstein in New York to wait until after Judge Pym in California um, issued her ruling. Um, the the case is, is you know, all, all of the litigators are focused on San Bernardino, and it was surprising uh, to see Judge Orenstein's ruling come out uh, when it did. So his, so that's, the New York ruling is not really about the phone, just as we've been talking about the San Bernardino ruling is not really about the phone. That's right. This is about whether the government has the power to compel a backdoor. Um, and the New York judge said very clearly, no. Hmm. Well, Nate, thank, thank you. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> no, I, from a regular perspective, a lot of people don't understand the concept of what's going on. Of once you open a back door to something, it also allows other people to get into that system too. It's not like you just give it to the government and, oh, the government's so trusted, like they're not getting hacked by teenagers every other weekend. It, it's a very delicate thing. And, you know, people make the argument on the news and the media, oh, well, who cares if somebody hacks and takes your pictures or whatever? You have bank accounts tied there, uh, social security information, all kinds of stuff. Everything's in everyone's phone now. I know a lot of people don't have computers. They use their phone for everything. So... That is a very, very important thing that people don't realize when they think, oh, well, what if a hacker gets it's not a big deal to just get your pictures? There's more than that going on with what the government wants Apple to do here. And, and that's a good point, Owen. Um, cryptographers and computer scientists who've looked at this issue are unanimous, like literally unanimous, that what the FBI is asking for can't be done safely. Um, there is, it's, it's like climate change. On one side, there's entrenched political interests, and on the other side is science. Uh, and Judge Orenstein luckily chose the side of science.